Um, let's take Dina's question and Hi. then wrap it up. How are you? I'm good. Um, this is bringing up all of the stuff. Um, I, I so feel you on so many of those aspects of like creating in spontaneity. You know, this podcast is coming from the fact that like I was collaborating with a woman who had a project that actually she met the Henson company. She had a one tooth puppet um, from ancient Italian folklore that ended up in a in a box when the, those meetings went downhill. And I was like, no, you can't let this die. And so I pulled the puppet out and started running around the streets of New York with it um, during the middle of the global pandemic, handing out like magic cookies, just to, like make people happy and ultimately heal an incredible amount of my own trauma via that. Like really, I had just an incredible discovery of just the beauty of the expressive arts, especially when you don't know where they're leading. Um, ultimately, I did have to let go of the puppet and, and that relationship because there just was not I was like pulling someone along that didn't, it was her project and then she didn't want to go for it. Um, and I'm now in this part of owning my own voice and story and, and sharing that um, and, and continuing with my, my desire to um, bring this ancient folkloric character kind of into the limelight again. Um, she's, a, she's known well, well known in Italy, but the tradition has been lost here. Um, but like the abundance stuff, the um, manifesting stuff, it, it's like, it really, it, there's something so obviously that bothers me. Say more about it. And by the way, I mean, you're just surrounded by love right now. You know, uh, right there's now. such a capacity, uh, especially I can, I can vouch for the women who are in the spotlights right now. There's tremendous capacity to, to give you a lot of love. And there's so much of that in the chat. So just say a little bit more about that. When you said there's something about that, that bothers me, what bothers you about that? What's, what can you put words to? Um, I mean, I get it. Like, um, well, because I mean, I'm not a, I'm, I don't want to be political. I want to be humane. Um, I mean, I spend my day job. I work with like unaccompanied, unaccompanied children from the border who are in transitional foster care and all of this heaviness, stuff. And, heavy pain, a yeah, lot of brokenness, a lot of, a lot yeah. of pain. Um, yeah. Which I do cut, you know, God has blessed me with the gifts of humor and entertainment. And I, and I bring that to my kids during the day. Um, so, but the manifesty part just feels so like, why wouldn't we have manifested a million other things in this world? Like, and then why should I, like, there's something that feels like, I'll keep going, going, keep going. Why go, say, go further. Come on, go further. This is so good. Why wouldn't we have what? What does that mean? Say more about that. Who's we? Some levels why of like equality and justice. And uh, why wouldn't we manifest a caring society? Like I'm, I want to create what I want to create, but like, and bring it from the inside. But I have a hard time with like every, with like the social fabric of our world kind of falling apart at the seams, it feels like. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so here, here's a little bit on that. And then I'll let Reese chime in. So there is always, always equality in the sense of there is equal parts, darkness and light. So for every broken thing, we can point to mm. something that's beautiful. Yeah. And that's the notes. That's the harmony. That's the continuum of the red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, violet. There's always the daylight hours and the nighttime hours. And what happens is everything is on behalf of the beauty, because when something sad and broken happens, just like if you bang your hand in the door, you slam your hand in the door, everything in the body rushes to bring it to health immediately. Yeah. Mm. So does the universe. So every time you see someone like Masa Amini, right? Right. She played a note it was so powerful. The note she played that in response to that darkness, <laughs> you see that much light and you can't deny that. Mm. Dina, you can't deny, you can't sit here and tell me that that's even equal, right? Mm. Because the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people who care about this woman 
who are lit up like a Christmas tree. She did that. She mm. called that into the world. Her energetic, her point of tunement, turn that on. That's mm. powerful, right? People mm. who lived in New York City during 9-11 said, I've never felt, I have never felt what I felt in those days, in those weeks. Mm. And we see it and we see it and we see it and we see it and we see it. And the sun goes down and we see darkness, 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 darkness. And the only way we know that that's called darkness is because the sun comes up and it's bright and it's bright and it's bright. But if I take a candle and I light that candle in the noonday sun, mm. you will not see it. It won't exist for you. There is no mm. light. There is no light at all. So mm. when you zoom out and you look at the masterpiece of the, yeah. of the ge geometry and the cohesiveness of the universe mm. and how it's equal parts, equal parts, equal. Look at the, it's, it's, it's insane. Mm. If you measure, which they've done, the diameter of the rings of Saturn and how it's perfectly symmetrical, right? Mm. And it goes this way and every single thing is like a helix, like moving in a dance, right? And it's the best thing ever mm. because every time there's a kid that's born with some kind of ailment, that just created all those people and all those roles whose life is dedicated like you to compassion, right? Mm. We just, we don't zoom out. It's like being at the MoMA mm. and you're standing like this, looking at a Monet and you're like, all I see is a splotch. And you step back all the way back to where they want you to stand and you go, oh, it's a lily pad. That's a lily pad, mm. right? When you zoom out and you look at this spinning globe, you're like, look how perfect it is, mm. right? But inside ourselves, we can decide to take our flashlight and take our point of perception and our, our view of reality and go, you, you, cause you were telling me a story and your story was it's damned, it's broken. And I'm like, look over here. And you went, wait, that's mm. also true. Maybe yeah. it's equal, equal. Maybe it's net, net, maybe it's magic. Mm. right well and that's that's what I found and that's what I you know saw you know through this project that just emerged because I said like let's stop thinking let's just go play and then we started playing and I saw you know in very dark corners of New York like you know <laughs> the you can look, but like you could look you can look everywhere and find it I was at my neighbor's house next door she's 86 years old she is an environmental genius she went to ucla and studied horticulture and she was showing me this i told this to colleen and she's like whoa it's so cool she was showing me this patch in her backyard of this of this garden and she said you know why this garden you know why i got these grapefruits and these dandelions and all of this just in this one patch i said why she said there was a fire here and when the fire went through it it birthed new earth mm. right and i was like oh and then she shows me a snake that had literally just eaten a mouse, a rattlesnake. And she said to my daughter, these rattlesnakes, when they're little, they don't even have a rattle. So you don't see them coming. And she was giving us all these amazing like assignments and like ways of looking at the world and things to yeah. do. And it was so cool. But when she was telling me about the snake and how the snake just like mercilessly ate mm. this animal, I was like, it's amazing what we do with humans. We're like, we throw such shade, right? <laughs> oh, we're gross. It's like, look at nature, my friend they don't give a shit. It's just like, and now I will murder you. <laughs> right. At least with humans, it doesn't make any sense, but a lot of humans, like a lot of humans stop at a red light and That's pay taxes amazing. and give charity. And it's like a polar bear doesn't care. It's like, if I'm hungry and I'm a polar bear, I will eat your food. Me and you and most people on the planet will be like, I'll, I'll, I'll give away some, which makes mm. no sense. It's actually not in nature. We mm. are incredible and mm. people have egos and they forget that we're in this oneness and they start to get into resistance and they start to feel bad and low and they turn off all their energy. They become like cesspools of negativity and then they hurt each other. And that happens. That's right. Mm. It's been happening since the beginning of time. Mm. What are you going to do about it? Be like, well, I'm going to focus on this. And it's like, well, 
You could pick any time in history. Let's look at the Spanish Inquisition. Let's look at Egypt. Let's look at the Aztecs. Let's look at, they used to practice child sacrifices. Like that was, that was awesome. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, and people are like, it's never been as bad. I'm like, what view of the world do you have? It's never been as conscious. People go to yoga now. People like literally read books on spiritual enlightenment. Like we are in the cutting edge. We are at the leading edge of consciousness. It's never been this good. It's mm-hmm. incredible. But that's why we're like, out of every thousand things I see online, I see someone who did something horrible. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's for sure going to happen, right? Mm. So this is, I'm so glad you asked this because it's like, you have come to the right place, my friend. Like you're, you're in the right place. Reese, mm. what would you like to say to this beautiful woman? Honestly, your answer was so perfect. So I don't have too much more to add to it, but I, I know what you mean when, when you're saying like, I don't know if I can believe in this, but I think, you know, if you're working with people who are facing a lot of hardship, like what Kathy was saying, you can be the light for them, mm. right? We, we can either say, oh, you've gone through all this hardship, so it's going to continue, or you've gone through all of this hardship and you can be the light for them that things can start to change. It could be one thing that you said. that I think where I, I get stuck on this and where I, I poo-poo manifesting, you know, there, I do want to see in my, my line, the ability to create generational wealth. I, I really I do. And I mean, I understand my own ancestry. I understand why I've been, you know, attracted to working with migrant students. I come from like peasant Sicilian people, you know, and, you know, and we've, I've had to push down so many aspects of my own culture in this culture. Um, and now I'm getting those back. But so there's this aspect of, you know, there's this like little heartbreak of like, I'm abandoning, I'm abandoning the people <laughs> if I do well or if I move into manifesting my highest potentials and my wealth potentials that I'm no longer in solidarity with, you know, and it's stupid because I know what my students that come here and risk their lives crossing borders for is because they want to make some fucking money to take care of their families. (laughs) And it's like, if I can break that, I know that I can like serve that population to such a higher capacity, but it's like, Every time I start going there, it's like, you know, this like Catholic guilt shit, you know, be a saint and like martyr yourself. And I'm like, oh, oh." yeah. Yeah. Mother, Mother Teresa said it took it. It takes a checkbook to change the world. Did she say that? Yeah, that's what that's her quote. That's her quote. Reese, Reese, what did you want to say? Oh, I I'm just saying every single thing that you're saying, it's so real to you and it's so real to everything that you've been through and those emotions are there. And what I want you to do is start to separate yourself from them and recognize that those those are thoughts. And like how we talked before mm-hmm. about recognizing our subconscious patterns, they can come from A to zero to seven, they can come from generational. And it sounds like what you're talking about is generational and just start to separate yourself from them and realize those are not me. Those are just beliefs that I've had, beliefs that I've continued to pass on. And if you mm-hmm. want to create generational wealth and break generational patterns, then you can be the first one that says just because they wanted more and couldn't have enough doesn't mean that that has to be me and doesn't mean that I have to continue that. And you can actually be the one that can prove that you can come from that background and make something great. And you can also be a role model to every single other person who's come from that same background that wants to know that it's possible. So you can be that chain breaker. Colleen, do you want to weigh in? I haven't let you, I haven't come to you. Yeah. Well, really it's like at the core is still a bit of this scarcity belief, right? Which are just thoughts. They're, they're, they're not truths. They feel like truths because it's what, how we're seeing and how we're perceiving, but it's like, but if I have more than I am abandoning other people. I'm leaving them behind, right? They, maybe they have less. They can't have what I have. I have this. When the default state of every single one of us is abundance, that is our natural state. And so when you think about this societal fabric that you're talking about, it's a reflection of the collective unconscious, right? It's like where we're at. And so it doesn't serve the rising of that when we stand quotes in solidarity with the people who are caught more in the struggle, the way we elevate that 
our powers through ourselves. That's it, right? And so when we can stand in our light, when we can allow more in, when we can increase our capacity to receive and be that stand, the you know the scales tip, right? And then the where the whole collective as a whole is at shifts, but we do it through ourselves. And that's really where the work begins. And the other thing I just want to add, you know, because I've had the pleasure of, of speaking with so many amazing people. And one of the people that comes to mind over and over again is uh, Dan Butner, who used to run National Geographic and discovered these blue zones. And the reason I bring this up is because we talk about money, like we make it about money when really what, what the reason, the reason somebody would cross the border, like you said, right, is like they want to be able to provide a better life for their family. But I want to just call on this for a second. So in these places where people live the longest, they're not just living long, like free of cancer. They're mm-hmm. riding bicycles at the age of 103 and making baguettes in the kitchen at 108 and tattooing henna onto their neighbors. And the reason they're living that long is because they're actually happy. Mm-hmm. And because they're actually happy, they're not talking about anything that they need in the external in order to be happy. Mm. So they're not talking about money. They're not in a struggle. Mm. They're just enjoying full feelings of abundance Mm. because they meditate every day. They pray every day. They work the land every day. They spend time with their grandkids and their great grandkids in a sense of purpose. Mm. And all of that means they feel like the wealthiest people in the world. Mm. And when we go back into that, we're very, very rich. So we don't need to cross into another state, another country. These people live in all different climates, Mm. in all different countries. But what we do is, We don't know how to turn on a feeling of well-being, of lightness of being, of our isness outside of our ego. So Mm. we feel like I would be happy if I lived there, I had this. That's Mm. proven to not be true. Mm. When we are fully in the feeling, the Dalai Lama doesn't care what's in his bank account. He feels so wealthy. He doesn't care. He's not gonna check it. He's not gonna look. Thich Nhat Hanh lived this beautiful life. He doesn't concern himself. And because of that, he became a magnet for zillions of dollars that he poured into the world in millions of ways. And he did live nicely. He didn't have Mm. to worry about a safe bed to sleep in. You hear what I'm saying? The Mm. focus is so on ego that it's so Mm. on money. You're obsessed with money. I'm not. I don't check my bank account and I don't budget either. And I don't worry about spending because I'm more worried about feeling right now that much grace in every moment. It doesn't matter to me. And this is what's fascinating. And you reset it at the beginning of our IG live. She's like, it, it was, she said, I'm paraphrasing, the people who she met who had a lot of money were actually really helpful. And what I realize is there's so many people who don't know how to feel good that they focus everything on the people who have money and how they don't have Mm -hmm. money. And I'm like, you know, what's weird. The billionaires that I've met, they're not obsessed at all with money. They're not waking up thinking about money at all because they have so much of it. They're on the next level of video game, which is what can I do? How can I serve? Where can I be useful? Mm -hmm. Because they've just allowed this money to create 45,000 jobs. And now they're more concerned about ridding the world of malaria. But Mm. then there's these people who are like, I have no ego, which is why I'm poor, which is why I hate people with money, but you're obsessed with money. And where's your well-being? Where's your well-being? How much radio signal did you give your neighbor today? Mm. Because it's not about the money. If you feel like shit right now with negative amount in your bank account, you will feel like shit with 45,000 or 4.5 million. But if you feel really good right now with $7, like these people in the blue zones, you're done. You will always attract money. You won't be able to help it. You are abundant. It's done. It's over with this convert. And that's why it's like, who would I be if I left them behind and had money? It's like, 
you'd be out of their their subconscious programmed is mm. here's all the reasons I'm not happy. I've externalized all my happiness and I can't get even healthy. I can't get abundant. I can't get dopamine. I, all I got is cortisol and scarcity. So what mm. am I going to give to the next person? Nothing. Because a happy, poor person will give a lot to the next yeah. person. So the conversation is about abundance in your isness, in your essence. That's why I say in my next book, abundant ever after, it's your birthright. You are already, you are already abundant. You have 55 trillion cells. You've won the life lottery. Enjoy it. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. It's just so amazing. Reese, I love you. She's going to go. We're going to close out. You're so gorgeous inside and out. It was so great to be here. And thank you so much for having me on your in your um, community and on Instagram. It was so great meeting all of you. Thank you so much. And I'll just finish by saying, Reese, we love you. Um, Michelle said money amplifies who you are. And yes, it does. Um, in the Talmud, which is thousands of years old, it says that money is like rain and whatever it falls on will grow. And so if money falls on a weed, you get more weeds, right? If rain falls on flowers, you get more flowers. And that's why it's a joke. I've seen very happy, rich people who were also happy when they were poor. And I've seen very miserable, rich people who were miserable when they were poor because they thought, they thought if they could just get that billion, that'd be everything. And then you go, look at you, you are miserable. Nothing mm -hmm. has changed for you. In fact, you're worse off because now you're like, you know, a, you're, you're, you're shackled to a business on top of everything else. And you have, it's like, it's just fascinating, right? It really is fascinating, but I hope that this gives you a little bit of perspective yeah. so you can just go enjoy your life. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. That <laughs> generational wealth, you can change that. You can let mm -hmm. that in. You can have mm -hmm. it. And then mm -hmm. what happens is you just will pour it into the people around you. Mm. Of course, that's all that only happens, right? Like this Oprah, just... said, Oprah said, I'm, I'm a custodian of this wealth. You're just a custodian of it. Where are you going to write those checks? Where mm. are you going to put them? It feels so great to be held in such a gorgeous circle like this. It, it's the support that- You're feels... gorgeous. Look at your empathy. <laughs> Look at your compassion. Mm. Look how you're able to sustain yourself even inside of a vortex like that. <laughs> And by the way, sometimes you think, well, maybe I actually could do more if I stepped out of this. Mm. And I went and created tons of generational wealth and then just gave a lot of money to these people. Ooh. Maybe I would serve. And it depends. You have to check in with yourself. Some people are meant to be a nurse in the ER. Mm -hmm. Some people are meant to do something else. You mm. have to check in. Mm -hmm. but maybe, maybe there's a pivot coming. Because mm. mm. it is a lot. It's a lot to be around static where people's paradigm is all broken pieces of scarcity and separation and how everything is external and not internal. That is hard to be around. It's hard to hear it. It's painful. It hurts, mm -hmm. right? It mm -hmm. hurts. So you guys, thank you for Dina. I mean, so much love and light, what you just brought in. So powerful. Thank you.